I got back to the shack tree today. Gave the crew the day off. I got in this morning, kind of got grease on the wheels, getting the machine moving. And uh, of course, my mom's like, oh my God, what did you do, Greg? And uh, Amy, she, she said, looks like you made a splash. Um, some of you heard about this t-shirt I did. You know, I make no apologies for it. If Chinese people in the Chinese government are screwing over the Chinese people, endorsing them and allowing them to screw over the Ameri their, their Chinese citizens to screw over America, Depicting them as Chinese is not actually racist. Now, when Abercrombie and Fitch did their t-shirts and they did Chinese uh, people like this and they did nasty kind of Tojo character, character, caricatures and they made fun of laundromats and Chinese food here in America, I can see People might not like the caricature, but that's what caricatures are. They're exaggerations. So I can see where everyone, you know, it's the beginning of the butthurt era. Every, everything is so good here. It's so good in America, even with gas at $5 a gallon. It's so good here that we get mad at people doing cartoons of evil Chinese people doing evil Chinese things that are actually happening. You know, these same people, they watch the NBA and they have no problem, you know, supporting companies that do business in China. It's so funny I get called a racist and my company looks like the fucking Rainbow Coalition. Yet people have no problem doing business with China who literally has people in concentration camps, disappears them and kills them if they don't agree with the party line, censors everyone, I mean, the Chinese government is using slave labor right now. It has the Uyghurs in concentration camps right now. They're oppressing their people right now. And people are really worked up about me doing a, a caricature cartoon of the Chinese working man being fucked over by a communist dictator holding out a bucket for the PLA, that's the People's Liberation Army, for all of you LGBTQ uh, abbreviation users who haven't read any books on actual history. And it makes fun of a little Chinese accent. The Chinese are incredibly racist people over there because they have a very homogenous society. And Americans are too stupid, ignorant, and unread to know the difference for the most part. Especially your wokeity woke crowd. Your little furries wearing little fur tails, little fur hats. Everybody said I was angry. I did some rant that violated community standards. I, w I read the community standards again. Watched it. Didn't violate the community standards, but I was like, okay, fine. I don't care. On YouTube, you can't actually tell the truth. You get it taken down. It's just kind of the way the game is played these days. So, a bunch of people lost their shit about this shirt. And if you just take a step back... You know, the government has, the, the, the Democratic Party and the government has fully thrown this racist garbage onto America. And what's happened is we all now point the finger at each other yelling racism instead of talking about what's going on in the world in our country. Do you think they're over there calling each other racist in China? You think they're over there calling each other racist in countries that are doing interesting things? 
They're not. They're not worried about that stuff. You know who's upset by my shirt? Chinese people from communist China who are trying to do business here in America and who are all in league with people who steal intellectual property. That's who's upset about it. Everybody else knows it's true. Now, the funny part is, all the knife makers coming up, putting their arm around me, going, dude, you got the balls to say it, nobody else is saying it. Dude, you got the balls to say it, nobody else is saying it. In 1936, 37, 38, and 39, if there were more guys like me willing to say it, say the truth out loud, do you think Nazis would have been able to round up six million Jews and six million gypsies and dissidents and people with Down syndrome and people with mental problems and kill them all? I mean, I ask you this. I'm getting called a Nazi by all these people and KKK and all of this stuff. And it was funny. I'm hanging out with my friend Kevin, my friend CJ, and like, oh, all racists say I have a token black friend. I don't have a token black friend. I actually have real friends of color, a variety of different kinds. Asian, Filipino, Mexican, black, white. Because <laughs> I'm actually not a racist. I'm willing to say stuff out loud, though, that's true. We are not allowed to say the truth anymore. You guys that are, I get these guys in here. You're dishonoring your service. You're dishonoring the country. How is it dis dishonor to the country to point out the wholesale theft of our intellectual property by a foreign country that's meddling in everything, has bribed everyone, and is probably the great evil of our era? And it's evil to point it out? I think you guys are silly. I think you guys are silly. Now, I don't mean all you guys watching this. I mean, you folks who are objecting to me. There's guys doing hour-long plus rants on how I'm a racist. Guys who've never met me, they're inaccurate about the t-shirt. They clearly, there's a generation of youngsters who've never read a newspaper. They've never seen an opinion page. They've never seen satire. They've never seen satirical cartoons. They've never seen Tojo being spanked by a US soldier in the Saturday Evening Post. They've never seen Muammar Gaddafi being spanked by Ronald Reagan after we dropped bombs and killed one of his kids. I mean, people have lost their sense of what satire is. Now, if you think I did the shirt to make fun of Chinese people, you have a limited understanding and you haven't watched my videos. I'm clearly very politically centric and aware as a man. I'm clearly sarcastic as hell. I'm clearly critical as hell of our government and theirs. I'm very critical. You know, go read Voltaire's Candide and you'll see what it looks like to be in an oppressed country with an oppressive regime and try to give critique. The funny part is, is the king doesn't come after me because the king, the party, has got y'all yelling racist at everybody. So we stop having conversations. Now I was just in Atlanta and I stop and talk to people all the time. It doesn't matter if they're black and white, it just so happens in Atlanta they're mostly black. I talk to black people all the time and I'm always wearing my political shirts. And as we get to talking, I find out almost always their vote's been taken for granted and their opinion's really close to mine on almost everything. It's shocking. My team has to put up with it. You know, like, ah, oh, the boss is always stopping and talking to everybody. I like talking to people. I, I, every, I, everywhere I go, whether it's an Uber driver or a waitress at the restaurant or whether it's the bartender or uh, somebody I'm standing next to in line, I start talking. And when they look at my shirt or my hat or something, they, they immediately, they, I see a look in their face and I just give them a smile and start talking with them. And next thing you know, Crazy Whitey, who they've been told is a racist, racist that wants to oppress them, an unhinged lunatic blast, black person who we've all been programmed to fear and not like for whatever reason, we find out we're almost identical. That's my big takeaway. You know who I'm not like? 
I'm not like your 15 to 30 year old white male or female in sub little chubbo that's never gotten laid and wears a phony tail off their thing and a fur hat wearing some androgynous um, uh, tank top with milky arms and one armpit shaved and gummy bears tattooed on their arm and three fingernails painted. I don't have anything in common with them because they're not reflective. They're not serious humans. They're not. Do you know how we know they're not? Because none of them are in power. Now, we've got lots of non-serious people in power, but not Furbies or Furries or whatever the fuck they're called. The woke mob is phony. It's phony. And if you're part of it, you're a phony. Now, here's my extension to you. I've never been mean to anybody ever who's come in to chat with me. And I've had some people come talk with me. I've invited Democrats in from all over the country. And, and, and oftentimes they come in and uh, we talk for a little bit and they're really surprised I'm nice. Like I'm gonna be mean to a guest just because of their political view. And then we start talking and they go, oh, he's kind of articulate and can, and then they don't wanna be on the show. They're ner now they're nervous because they go, oh, this guy's not a hater. He's, he wants to have a real discussion. You know, by myself, I rant a little bit. This is how I kind of fetch out my angst. I, I kind of do it with you guys. I, you guys are kind of like my little digital, little digital family friends. So the shirt, it was old fashioned. You know, I don't cause hate towards Asian people or towards Chinese people. China causes hate towards Chinese people. China imprisons people. Do you know why Chinese people are afraid of the government over here? Because they will leverage the people here to get what they want and force them to spy against their employers and their fellow Americans by torturing their family or imprisoning their family in China. China doesn't need my help getting a bad rap. China's got a bad rap. They're bad. China's bad. When are they going to step up and make their government behave right? I'm not making Chinese people get a bad rap. China's making Chinese people get a bad rap. Nobody gives a shit what Greg Medford thinks. What we are is we're sick of being told not to express ourselves. We're sick of being censored. I'm sick of people in my industry coming to me and saying, hey, Greg, you ought to tone it down. And I say, why? Well, it causes controversy. And I go, okay, so? Well, people might not buy knives. And I go, okay, that's all right. There's plenty of people to buy knives. Guys, the whole industry's backed up a year, maybe two years. Why is any reseller worried about selling knives? They all carry my stuff. If one of them drops it, all of the crazy, unhinged, uh, uh, cancel culture leftist knife carriers aren't all of a sudden going to shift over to one company. It's just not true. I don't need to be a good little boy, hold my head down and be quiet and keep my opinion to myself. I don't need to. It's not my job. My job when I was a young man was to do my country's bidding when I was in uniform. I, and I took an oath and I swore to it. It was for life. It wasn't for a couple years. To defend my nation against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Every veteran has taken that oath. It is not my job to sit quietly by. And as a civilian, if you want to idly sit by, that's fine. That's okay. I recommend you don't. I had the owner of a famous knife company you all know of on the phone with me last night saying, I wish I would support you more. I wish I had supported you more because of something they had had happen at the show. I wouldn't want to divulge the, to divulge the uh, discretion of that, but the reality is the entire knife industry comes over and puts their arm around me and says, God damn, dude, you're saying out loud what so many of us are thinking. I wish we could say more. And I go, you can.
When did wearing an inappropriate t-shirt become controversial? When, is, when did everyone get so sensitive? There are real things to worry about. You know, we're going to have, they say, 3.2 million illegal people come into the country, many of them muling drugs this way and cash that way. Those are real problems. Walk down any major street in any city over 100,000 people in this country, and you will see our fellow Americans addled by drugs made in China, exported from China, and imported to the United States through our ports and across the Mexican borders. There's a war going on. I had a cybersecurity expert working for me for a while, and we were getting up to 80 million hits at one point per hour from Chinese-based servers trying to crack into our business. It's not an exaggeration. 80 million hits per hour, brute force code breaking. They're evil. Now, youngsters, you guys don't know this, but in the last century, we fought a couple of world wars. And after World War II, the communists had really risen. And we had a cold war with them for several decades, and they lost. And at the end of the whip of communism is the oppression of the individual, the oppression of society, the rise of the oligarch, disinformation, state-controlled media, state-controlled business, state-controlled freedom. Translation, no freedom, crushing of the individual, and a complete absence of greatness. During that same period, we saw the rise of Apple, Google, the internet, space travel. I mean, Individual creativity and vitality and the ability to rise one station through one's efforts, the ideas of self-determinism and John Locke for people, men and women of all colors has never, ever been greater. And what they want us talking about is abortion. And they want us screaming racist at one another so that we don't look to Washington and see that everybody who goes there ingratiates themselves with Wall Street inside trades and sells us out to China. While Donald Trump was being excoriated and impeached for a fake Russia collusion story, he was being cross-examined by Eric Swalwell, Congressman Swalwell from California, who was fucking a known Chinese spy on his staff. Ethics Committee didn't pull him off the panel that's not made up. You can Google it. It's all over the place, widely reported, even in lamestream media. The guy cross-examining Donald Trump, the president, seated president of the United States, the guy cross-examining for impeachment was fucking a Chinese spy in real time. You can't make this stuff up. So continue to vote Democrat, call me racist, don't talk about anything real, and wonder why you can't afford gasoline, why you can't get formula for your babies, wonder why meat's doubled in price, eggs doubled in price, milk's doubled in price, your savings are being crushed. Why? Because of globalism in a new world order that's being foisted upon us by greenies and people who instead of dealing with change over time are causing a human calamity now. And they don't want you to talk about it or look, about, look at it or critique them. They don't want to be accountable. What they want you to do is take somebody who's an outspoken critic and yell racist and point at them. Racist. Point at them. How does this connect? Greg's just obfuscating. No, I'm not. This is all connected. Do you know why China wants the green initiative? Because they don't comply with it. We will. It hampers our country and our economy, not theirs. They laugh at us. They laugh at us. That's the great part of all these digital meetings over the last two years. They're on the record laughing at us. We're a silly people. How can you take seriously a nation of people 
who scream racist at each other and they don't make antibiotics in their own country anymore. How can you take seriously a nation of people who argue about esoteric silliness of bathrooms and gender and LGBTQ, RST, LMNOP, and they don't make toasters in their country, and they don't make semiconductors anymore, and their car dealerships are empty because the titans of industry there are interdependent on Asian manufacturing because they don't make their own stuff. Why? Well, because folks from the Kinsey Institute and Wharton have all exported all the jobs in the global economy. Upper class Americans shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't do that. We should let the third world rise. And now we don't make anything for ourselves. We make cars. We make cars that have about a thousand microchips in them that now we can't put in the cars and now the cars aren't available. We're a silly people. We were a great nation and we are a silly people right now. Who could take us seriously? Guys, I don't take us seriously. I fucking don't. And I damn sure don't take you softy little wussies who call me a racist. I don't take you seriously either. I think you guys are amusing. I think you're losers. I think you're weak-minded. I think you're weak. You have weak arguments and weak minds. And if you observe me and your takeaway is racist, I think you have a one-dimensional view on the world. You're not nuanced or subtle in any way. I, I feel sorry for you. Imagine going through an entire life missing subtlety. My t-shirt, it wasn't subtle. It wasn't meant to be. The meanings were a little bit subtle. The working class being fucked over by the communist dictator, the money for the military, the intellectual property from Americans. And then if you look at the shirt, the title at the cross wasn't some, the title at the top of the, the uh, little cartoon, it wasn't some slang Chinese, poke fun at Chinese people. It was don't buy Chai Com knives. Chai Com means Chinese communist knives. The words are relevant and, and playing off of the cartoon. So people don't understand the cartoon because they don't read, because they're woke instead of thoughtful, because they're silly instead of serious. Am I worried about it? Nope. You want to not do business with me because of it? Fine. Do you know what my Taiwanese people said when they saw it? Can I have one? Do you know what several Chinese people said who asked for the shirt and I gave it to them? They said, totally right. Xi Jinping's bad. You know who's mad at me? Phony fucks. Phony woke fucks unthoughtful people who couldn't tell that they don't know the difference between Taiwan and China. They don't know the difference between North Korea, South Korea. They don't know the difference between a Thai and a Taiwanese. These are silly people or they're virtue signaling. Now I can't read the comments cause I don't have my glasses on. I'm going to read some comments with you guys. We'll see how this goes. Let's take a look here. All right, we'll start. Let's we'll see how many, how many haters I got. I got here. Greg for oh, this is Greg for president. I get that a lot. I want one. Cry babies. I wish people would see that it was not focused on the Asian culture. It was making a statement about Chinese stealing someone else's product. Yep. Your favorite knife maker. Greg loved the shirt. Same people angry about this shirt. Still watch Family Guy. Furry tails and hats. The people that don't like Greg also believe men can get pregnant. I will show you the OTF soon. Um, Team America is racist, you're right. Can't wait, your shirt is on its way to me. Oh, somebody must be bringing JPM 71 a shirt because we don't ship any of those out, we don't have them. 
I want one shirt, but I live in Germany. That's okay. I don't have any. It's all by design, Greg. The conspiracies want, yep, yep. Um, can we get a pocket check, Greg? Yeah, sure. Let me see what I got in my pocket. Oh, Jesus. I got off the airplane last night. I threw my jeans on from last night, and I forgot to bring my knife this morning. <laughs> I'm usually carrying a Swift uh, these days. Let me put this on. Uh, let's see what else we got. Hypocrites. Wish you would have been in EDC Specialties. Yeah, I'll be there next year. Yeah, so, you know, I think um, it behooves us all. Look, I'm not an unreflective guy. I knew the shirt was edgy, and I had some uh, folks that were Asian in line, and I said, hey, this shirt's a little, eh, this may not be a, uh, maybe maybe you don't want to. And they looked at it, and they're like, no, man, totally true. Hate the communists. Okay, here's a shirt. I mean, it was bizarre. It's wokey woke white people who've lost their mind. Anyway, I thought I would get on here and just say hi to you guys and chat a little bit about the shirt. Um, let me know if you saw the picture of me uh, uh, naked passed out by the pool. You know, it's funny. Everyone thinks, I, I don't really drink. I, I don't do any drugs. I'm, uh, I'm kind of a provocateur. Um, I like to kind of push buttons a little bit. I, uh, I, there's an irony, there's an irony. There's an irony to what people say and what they don't know. We, we, you know, we had people coming by saying, can you believe they're saying this? And I said, yes, I can. They're ignorant and uninformed. Um, there's some redheaded dude who's got an hour and 20 minute long rant and, uh, he's just trying to get views. He's, uh, I feel sorry for him. He's not a thoughtful guy. And, uh, and he's somebody who kind of knows us and still thinks that. And he's just not a thoughtful dude. I was looking around at, I was looking at the variety of Americans who were hanging out with me this weekend. And I was, and they were all, we were all kind of cracking up about what a big fucking racist I am. You know, it's funny, I don't associate with anybody because of their color or not because of their color, ever. I just associate with people I like. And it ends up, I've got some left of center and some right of center uh, folks of color that like hanging out with me. Uh, sometimes they like my politics and sometimes they don't. That's the way it is probably with all friends. And, uh, you know, I, I try not to traipse them around or trot them around trying to like show how open-minded I am because I'm not real open-minded. I'm just thoughtful. A good mind is not... I'm not open-minded to stupid. I'm closed-minded to stupid. I'm open-minded to thoughtful conversation. I'm open-minded to thoughtful critique. I'm open-minded open to uh, good outcomes. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not open-minded to dumb. You know, if the MBA wants to lecture me, the MBA's got a lot of work to do at home. You know, if you, if, if the neighbor's out front and tells you your kids need to wear bicycle helmets and you look over at the neighbor's house and in one of the windows, you can see the two legs of his daughter up in the air while some biker's in there having his way with her. And you see like pot smoke coming out one of the other windows and you see empty bottles in the front yard. You say, hey man, why don't you take care of your shit, Joe? And I'll worry about my kids and their helmets. You know what I mean? That's the way I feel about a lot of these folks. I was going to talk about one other thing with you. Uh, let me uh, answer this question. So,
I am concerned. And I've got to be careful about what I say because I've been pulled off YouTube numerous times now. So YouTube, who's the president? Maybe you guys know. Who's the president and CEO or the CEO of uh, Alphabet? I think he and Zuckerberg and the guy from Twitter... They seem really comfortable suppressing information. And they did it a lot in the last couple of years, and it all turned out to be true. So there's this movie out there called 2000 Mules. And you guys got to go to 2000mules.com, and you got to jump through some hoops. And it's been suppressed everywhere, and it's still getting millions of views. And it goes through, and it talks about 2020. You should watch the movie 2,000 Mules. What I'm concerned about is, is, an, is if enough of us watch that and they try to do it again in 2024, I'm concerned about what happens then. Now, people say, oh my God, Greg, we've never seen times like this. It's never been this bad. And I'm like, well, it was pretty bad at Antietam. It was pretty bad at Gettysburg. You know, we have lined up before thousands and thousands of us and killed a lot of each other. You got to see a kind of angry bunch of folks on January 6th. And you saw them not led, not cajoled, and not told to do anything. And it almost reached a boiling point. Now, in the grand scheme of things, in retrospect, it was like catching the kids smoking a little weed in the basement this big dangerous January 6th, but imagine if the crowd had been big. I'm kind of worried about if we have another uh, major election cycle that is perceived by so many to be clearly uh, not accurate. I'm concerned about the outcome of that. I don't think it would be nice. I mean, the guys that stand on my side of the aisle are, are hostile and kind of been eating a shit sandwich. And we're all guys, we, you know, we've all been on teams and lost games and taken the bad calls and gone home with the second place of the season or whatever, not winning the championship. So we're all pretty okay. You don't see us sitting around crying and wearing vagina hats and screaming at a TV because our guy didn't get elected. But the shit sandwich we've been eating ever since, the suppression of our conversation and the facts that are coming out about it that we've been told are lies, mainstream media lies about, and the facts that are coming out. When you see this, watch this 2,000 Mules. You don't have to take it from Greg. Watch this and tell me what you think. You guys can message me at 480-227-2399. That's my cell phone. That's the thing I'm most concerned about is 2024. I think you got a whole group of people who say, okay, one time shame on you, second time shame on me. If it happens again, I'll tell you what, I think we're in for rough times. I think $10 a gallon gasoline will be a dream when that moment happens too. It'll be a, it'll be a happy, oh, t I, if only I just had $10 a gallon gas. That's how bad it'll be. That's what I'm the most worried about. Oh, Greg, what do you think? Uh, I'll tell you what I think. I'm worried about that. Anyway, if you get a chance, talk about it, watch it, and then talk about it with everyone you can because it's being suppressed badly and we can use the oral tradition of the ancients and get everybody to see this and see what happened. It's amazing. It'll take your breath away. It'll make you really... You're going to have a couple of nights where you kind of toss in bed wondering what to do. And, uh, and then you'll be calling me up and texting me. I'd like to hear what you think. Anyways, these are my thoughts on all of the uh, vitriol being casted my, cast my way. Plus the love. The love. You know, nobody calls me up and says, yeah, man, those goddamn dink. Joe Schlope. Nobody says anything like that. There's a bunch of racist assholes. They're like, man, thanks for speaking up. Thanks for saying it out loud, man. Somebody needs to say it. They're stealing our country. 
Do you want to know what China could do right now? Look, at China is making the fentanyl that's the number one cause of death for people under the age of 35 in the United States. Cancer's not killing more. Disease is not killing more. Fentanyl from China is killing more people. All China would have to do is say, hey, we need all of our antibiotics for domestic use. Good, good luck, United States. We get 80% of our antibiotics straight from China. That's all they have to do. I mean, we've literally strategically given up the farm. So guys like me are pointing it out. They just happen to be Chinese. I wish the Chinese looked exactly like us. I mean, I'm glad they don't because we could spot them. But I wish they looked exactly like us so I could say, them, them damn dirty Russians. <laughs> yeah, but they don't. They just look a little different. Thank God. Kind of spot them. Because they're so evil right now. You know, if you want to see where I'm coming from, read a national intelligence estimate that is open to the public, free for the public to read. Read the Defense Department's national intelligence estimate on the spying that Chinese students, teachers, and employees are doing in the United States that we know about. That's what we know about. All right. That's my rant for this Monday. I'm going to get back to knife making and dealing with my company. And uh, we have to continue to fight the good fight. We can't just give up. We can't let people call us. Rusty, you're right. There are spies of every nationality, but there are not there is never, we have never seen the wholesale use of spies like the Chinese are. They're using the collegiate system. They're using the work exchange system. Um, we've never seen the volume of it. It is absolutely, our government is completely permeated by it. Well, let's see what those last comments are. They should be interesting. Keep up the great work. Oh yeah, four or five hours to fill up a gas tank under Carter. I'm far, I'm far from over being pissed. Oh yeah, yeah. China is literally murdering our innocents. It's absolutely true. Only 22 likes, but 130 in here. Hit that like before you leave. Oh. <laughs> Only 22 likes, but 130 in here. Hit that like before you leave. Thanks, Kevin. I hear fish antibiotics are exactly the same, and people use them. Oh, Chris, I don't know about that. Yes, they have spies everywhere. That's true. Virtue signaling white kids. Yep. Yeah, the CIA should be feeding it. You know, something else I want to throw out here, and, and uh, I'm going to say this, and I know this is going to ruffle some feathers, but I'm going to say it anyways. We hear that the FBI lied under oath to the Justice Department and to FISA courts uh, to begin the multi, multi, multi-million dollar and colossal distraction from the running of our nation impeachment uh, scam that the Democrats foisted upon America during the Trump presidency. And they say, oh, it was the leadership. It's not the leadership. Uh, I think the FBI needs to be shut down. I think the Department of Education needs to be shut down, and I think the ATF needs to be shut down. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, um, they have done nothing but create a bureaucratic mess that doesn't stop anyone from getting a firearm, and we're all in compliance. The, uh, uh, they, they haven't done anything to, 
I, I mean, why, why are they regulating alcohol, you know, and, and tobacco? Why do we need an agency for that? We pass a law or we don't pass a law. We enforce a law or we don't. Why do we need a, al we need a special, you know why? The ATF was formed during prohibition and the government would never get rid of it afterwards. 2,000 Mules, I think it's at 2,000mules.com. It was done by Dinesh D'Souza. So if you go to Dinesh D'Souza, go to his site, look around, you're going to start seeing some stuff for it, and you follow it, and you can find it. So I say the FBI is corrupt top to bottom, and I'm sure there are good people in there, but I would shut them down in two goddamn seconds. Oh, but we do this, we do that. Bullshit. Awful. For all the money they take from us to ramp up the FBI to spy on American citizens, pass. Not interested. I would cut the government by 65%. All departments immediately were I to become president or king. I would say, yep, all departments. Every time I talk to a federal government employee, friend, acquaintance, and they start telling me about their workplace and how impossible it is to get fired and how little people work and how lazy people are and how many gaps there are in their uh, work ethic in their subculture. Uh, and they give me a number. They say you could probably get rid of three out of four government employees when you ask them. Yeah, I, I think these government agencies don't need an overhaul. I think they need a dismissal. FBI, Justice Department, ATF, uh, Department of Education, and then cut everybody else, at least in half. Every other person, fire them. Uh, it would put a bunch of workers out into the marketplace where we need workers, we need employees, we need smart team members. Uh, there, were been, there have been studies done And long-term studies on government employees. And it says the longer you work, your IQ shrinks as you work for the federal government. Now, the intelligence quotient, guys are going to call bullshit on this, and you could kind of Google the studies. And I thought it was the UCLA. Uh, UCLA did it um, in the 1960s. But I remember reading about this in college. They did studies on people who worked in government. And your IQ is supposed to be your latent intelligent quotient, your ability to process information and uh, draw abstract uh, connections. See, it goes down every year you work in the federal government. It decreases. It's measurable. They test you. <laughs> kind of funny. They want to take away guns over these shootings. We have a drug crisis. We have a homelessness crisis. We have a, 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 a failure to educate our children's crisis. We've doubled the cost of fuel and food and energy. And they think we have a gun problem. <laughs> I mean, do you see how crazy it is? A good part of this country kind of always lives on the edge, paycheck to paycheck. You just cut their paycheck by 30 or 40%. What do you think is going to happen? Their kids are stressed out. The families are stressed out. When people's stress levels go up, their, their, uh, uh, their weaknesses, their psychological foibles all start to surface. Their insecurities, their fears, and their neuroses and psychoses. Why are we having all these shootings? Well, we're having shootings just like happened in Chicago every weekend. The only difference is Chicago's had a lot of years to practice being ruined, and we're all just getting used to being ruined. We're all just getting used to being ruined, and we don't like it. Chicago's used to being ruined. They know what it looks like. So is Detroit, Minneapolis, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle. They're all used to being ruined. They think that's normal. They want us all to suck as bad as they do. They're used to waiting in lines. They're used to the smell of shit needles, aggressive homeless people threatening you as you try to get a coffee or go to work or get on a bus. They're used to everything being too expensive and not having a car. They think we're silly. 
I think the people out in the provinces are silly. They're happy to have us all like them. New York, for sure. And we're all just getting used to the suckiness that they're used to. And you know what? We don't like it. And people are shooting each other over it because they're pissed. The kids are stressed out. They haven't been in school in a couple of years and they feel like they're incompetent in their current math classes. They feel incompetent applying for colleges, missing all this stuff. So that last comment, Knife Center says they won't sell Medfords now. Casey, I didn't know that. That must be new news. You can call me up if you want. Um, Knife Center did come to me and they said they were rattled by the accusations being thrown at me. And we're going to need to talk about it. And it sounds like they had a meeting and canceled me. And if they did, I feel sorry for them. I feel sorry for them uh, canceling me. But listen, if you're a furry or a furby or a phony woke uh, woke warrior, um, go ahead and I guess you can go to Knife Center if it's true. I don't know if they actually canceled me. I just have Casey telling me that. I don't know if that's actually true. But if they did, you can go shop with them if you don't like me. What are you going to do? All right, I'm going to get off the air now. You guys have an awesome Monday. I hope you guys slay the dragon out there and bring home the bacon for your family. Greg Medford from Medford Knife, MKTUSA, and ASK Knives. I'm out.